Christ community, friends and family, uh, this is Pastor James uh, coming at you with another Wednesday's Word, an opportunity for encouragement, a reflection, and possibly a challenge. I hope each and every one of you are healthy and well on the second Wednesday of the month, uh, November 11th, uh, 2020. A special and blessed Happy Veterans Day to you all. Happy Veterans Day to those in our in our uh, congregation who have served our, our nation, our country so selflessly. Uh, we thank you so much for your service. Uh, as I've been reflecting and uh, praying for our church family over the past uh, couple weeks, and I have been sharing a lot that's been on my heart, that God has placed on my heart uh, from the Sunday pulpit as well as our Wednesday's Word. And I pray that those words have been an encouragement and challenge for us all. Now this week, in light of what's going on across our nation post-election day, as well as the fact that today is Veterans Day, uh, I wanted to share uh, from a passage from Romans 12. Uh, I encourage you to read that whole passage, but I'm just going to read uh, one verse. Uh, but in that passage heading, it says the marks of a true Christian. I encourage you to think about that question. What is the mark of a true Christian? Uh, Romans 12, chapter 12, verse 15, God says, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Now, not many veterans are fortunate enough to hug a loved one and come home after a tour of duty abroad, especially during war. Now, to, to say I love you to a loved one, to make more memories at home, in those cases, you can say that that veteran's family is relieved to have him home, to have her home. To, relieved to make more memories, relieved to say I love you that many more times, relieved to, say, uh, to, to hug that loved one. And, if, and I've spoken with many veterans who know at least one person that lost their life, whatever the case may be, whether it's war or an accident. And they no longer will be able to hug that loved one or say, I love you. And in many cases, those families are grieved. They're living in that grief even many, many years later. Now, if you think about our past elections, past presidential elections, in our 2016 election, there were a group of people across our nation that was grieved by the results. Uh, there were another group of people that were relieved by those results. In the 2020 election, as the results have come trickling in, there are people who are grieved and there are people who are relieved. I don't think there's 100% of the population in our country that's relieved and 100% of the population that is grieved because we are the United States of America that is made up of a mosaic of people from literally all nations across the world. People are different. So it makes sense that there are people who are grieved and there are people who are relieved. Pastor Tim Keller uh, from Redeemer Presbyterian Church wrote an op-ed article in the Times a couple years ago and he, he shared how true Christians do not fit into the two-party system of our country. And as I've been reflecting on, about, uh, on that article, um, yeah, you know, we are entitled to our opinion. We're entitled to who we want to vote for. But as a Christian, as a Christian, if we see someone who's grieved, whether it's by the result of the election or someone who's grieved with the loss of a loved one from war, or someone who's grieved because of uh, oppression, because of poverty, but because of hurt and scars and abuse. We're called to weep with those who weep. We're called to weep with them. We may not be in those same shoes, but the gospel teaches us compassion to lead us to that place. And that's why I encourage you to read this whole passage in Romans 12. Now as a Christian, if we 
uh, if we see someone who's relieved by the results of the election or someone who's relieved at the return of a loved one from war or someone who's relieved because of a successful surgery or a job promotion or a child being born we're called to rejoice with those who rejoice now this scripture passage isn't necessarily telling us to rejoice in their results the scripture passage is trying to teach us to rejoice in that heart rejoice in the in that rejoicing right to find joy in that joy that 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 person has right now and having the compassion and empathy to to have the heart of rejoicing with those that may be relieved now if we look around there's quite a lot of opinions in our community in our in our country in our in our world and yeah you can say that there's quite a lot of division as well but my prayer and hope is that we can remember this passage from Romans 12 and we can truly and my prayer is that we can truly live it out rejoice with those who rejoice weep with those who weep not necessarily in the results per se but in that empathy in that compassion in that heart god bless you all love you all but god loves you more